Good afternoon, Oradellians. It's time for our monthly Mayor and Council update. Last night we had our Mayor and Council meeting and I'm gonna give you our abbreviated version. I'm gonna to try to keep it moving along quickly so that we're there. We always start off our meetings with proclamations. We had a lot of proclamations uh, last night. We did a proclamation for National Autism Acceptance Month for Arbor Day, for the Municipal Clerks Week, and for National Public Works Week. And I'm gonna make a notation for National Public Works Week that um, in addition to being recognized for their great service to Ordell, the GIF, which is our joint insurance fund, also awarded Ordell a $1,750 award for our safety. That is actually controlled and run through our DPW. So many thanks to uh, Dan and Chrissy in the DPW who make Oradell a safe place for our residents and our employees and thank you for the GIF for recognizing us and we greatly appreciate the award on behalf of that. We also then we always file our correspondence and we adopted the minutes from the May 28th meeting. We moved into probably the most important thing that as a mayor and council we do is we manage the budget and the finances. And so we introduced the budget last night and it's in a few different sections that I'll explain. Um, as we know, this has been an incredibly difficult year with the inflation and costs have gone up. More importantly, our pension obligations and the cost of health insurance have skyrocketed into the low double digits. This year, our municipal portion of the budget will be going up 7.34%. And that, to me, is a number that's not acceptable, you know, as a councilman, that we never want to be delivering a budget at that level. But I will tell you, at the start of the budget process, we were near 10%, and we have trimmed and cut wherever we could. You know, the issue really lies down is the contractual obligations, which include, like I said, our pension benefit, salary, and health care. And, you know, those are beyond our control and scope of purview. And, you know, those things that we can control, we've kept most budgets flat. And in many cases, budgets were reduced. So what does that mean for the typical Ordell resident? You're looking for a municipal levy of an increase of $336 for the average Ordell home. At this point, I want to express our thanks to uh, Katie and Kevin, the borough administrator, who keep us in line and you know, help us to manage and deliver the most efficient budget possible. We also do two resolutions. One is about deferring taxes for the regional high school and the local school, and we also establish our local cap bank. These are really just more procedural, but we do do it every year. We then move into the consent agenda. Really nothing for us to point out within the consent. There's a series of resolutions in there. The one that I will add is that we've hired a new DPW laborer and a part-time laborer. Um, we are severely personnel challenged in the DPW. Uh, we have some injuries and we've had some people that have left Ordell. So we are trying to get backfilled in our personnel for the DPW just to make sure we continue to deliver the quality of services the representatives, you know, um, our residents expect. We move on to our committee reports. First, I'll start with uh, Council President Schoenberg and for the fire, uh, she actually couldn't attend. So uh, Rob Janicelli sat in on her. We have a new command vehicle coming in. Uh, we have new turnout gear coming in and we have a new equipment rack to get stuff off the floor. So it'll help preserve the life of the equipment. We also have an update on the old Mo restoration that they've started phase two which includes, I'm going to just call it engine components. They rattled off some other things, carburetors, ignitions, you know. But bottom line is, is old Mo is in the process of uh, being restored. Do you want to note here that we did lose one of our life members of the fire department. Um, Elliot Thompson passed away. Um, I've actually known Elliot since I'm a little kid, so 
uh, caught me a little off guard, but condolences to the family and thank him for all of his years of service to this town. And uh, it's a sad loss for us. Um, on the administrative end for Tracy, um, our UPSEU contract negotiations are continuing. We've applied for three parks in the open space grants. Uh, the county gave us the ability to combine three parks, Hoffman, Memorial, and Deepak in one grant, uh, which is not typically done, but they gave us permission to do that. For the seniors, class attendance continues to rise, and we were selected to participate in the age-friendly conference that's being conducted by Rutgers. Uh, they came up and actually interviewed some of our staff on that and were impressed with what we were doing and asked us to be presenters at the conference. Then we moved on to myself with the DPW. Um, as always, we defer to our engineer initially and he talked about the war memorial. We are fingers crossed, double fingers crossed, that it will be ready by Memorial Day. The flagpoles are going to be installed next week and we're expecting the plaque to be delivered in the next three to four weeks. So again, double fingers crossed that we're ready for Memorial Day. With regards to roads, we are in the design phase of Prospect and Grant Avenue. Prospect is a two-part process that's going from Ordell Avenue to Ridgewood Avenue, and then Ridgewood Avenue all the way around to Village. It was actually two years of grants. In addition, we're gonna be doing work around McKay, and McKay, the section that's in front of Riverdale. You're probably saying to yourself, that's a lot of work happening around our schools. We're trying to get that done during the summer so it's low impact on our schools in, this, in the uh, September timeframe. In addition, we have our annual road program, which is Iroquois and Shira this year. <clears throat> and we also have our partnership with PSE&G where we'll be doing Hague Court and Francis Court um, with PSE&G. Onto the DPW, uh, we had an Elm Street sinkhole that needs to be addressed. I already mentioned that we're hiring uh, Joe Van Orden and that we're also looking at an assistant superintendent position uh, to assist with the management and also to provide an extra set of hands. We're also voted on a styrofoam shared services agreement with Ridgewood. Uh, Ridgewood bought a styrofoam machine and it would be very advantageous for us to get into an agreement with them so that we don't have to do a three hour round trip drop off into, I believe it's Haskell, New Jersey, where we were taking our old styrofoam. Then we move on to Councilman Carnival for public safety. We held interviews on the public safety committee to hire one new officer. Uh, the background check is in process and that will actually get us to a full force and a thank you to our DPW, our police department, and our fire department, and all of those residents that came out for the transporting of Sergeant Salinas home. I'm breaking up on that, just the thought of it. Uh, they also yesterday held the um, first annual OPD golf outing. Uh, thank you to Dan O'Leary for organizing. Looking forward to how that event builds going forward. And this is for all residents, a reminder that May 4th to May 12th, New Milford Avenue will be closed um, as New Jersey Transit is rebuilding the railroad crossing there. Uh, for the historic committee, they continue to work on their mission statement and also noting that the grave markers for the Vori Cemetery should be in in the next four to six weeks and there will be an event commemorating that. So please be on the lookout for that coming forward. As I said, uh, Councilman Janicelli wasn't there, but he did send in a report. The Ordinance Committee met and there was discussion on the continuous use for restaurants um, and what they're doing is they're delineating between major and minor. Major would have to go to the planning board. Minor would have to go to the zoning official. And if I remember correctly, there were only two places that qualify for minor 
and that would be Labberger and Schreiber's. Um, anything else would be considered major and would have to go to the planning board. Also discussed was a sidewalk curbing ordinance. Um, many of our surrounding towns have ordinances that require a maximum amount of space between a sidewalk slabs so that it's a tripping hazard. So we're assessing putting that in. Uh, advance notice will be given to all residents um, before we would enforce any ordinance that would come in to place. Regarding recreation, the pickleball nets are up. Summer rec information is out. And they're looking for volunteers who can help coordinate tennis and pickleball tournaments. So if anybody is willing to volunteer, they can reach out to the recreation department and Ken Bauman down there. Then we moved on to Councilman Kern. I talk about the technology committee and how they're looking to restructure and looking into cloud services. And finally, he talked a little bit about cybersecurity and that we're looking at our insurance and what we can do to make sure that we're covered and that we have the proper insurance in place. Into the zoning board, they heard the 66 Kinderkamack Road. Um, they've hired the representation for the town and they also heard 240 Kinderkamack Road. There was a bunch of testimony about the building. They've also hired Caroline Ritter as our permanent planner. She was a, a temporary and now they've hired her permanently. Regarding the environmental, they had the Earth Day Fair last weekend and they did a town cleanup. The Arts Fest is on June 11th. And this Sunday will be the Eagle Scout Car Wash at the Senior Center, so please go get your card cleaned. And they're raising money for the Eagle Scout project for this year. The Farmer's Market is coming. Uh, we have the same farmer as last year and they're currently looking for vendors. Regarding OPTV, we're looking to have the electric work done shortly and uh, looking to add the screens that are going to go up to provide information for any of our boards that are meeting. Regarding OPS, uh, they're currently at 799 students, which is up about 50 students from last year. I'm going to come to the mayor's report in a minute. Uh, she actually did most of her reports scattered throughout the meeting, so you've heard those updates. Regarding the borough administrator, as you know, we've talked about the budget meetings as we introduced last night. We're trying to get relief um, on the insurance increases. According to Governor Murphy, uh, there's something in the works. Um, so I'm going to knock on my desk to say hopefully those are coming. Continue to talk with the UPSEU negotiations and the PBA will be starting shortly. Sustainable New Jersey, we're in the process of our recertification. We were silver last year and we intend to be silver again this year. Into old business, farmer's market. They are looking to get a beer permit for the farmer's market. Um, and so we're trying to find out the details of that and a reminder out to the merchants that weed season is coming and if they can maintain uh, the front of their locations would be great. Um, and then finally, we go to public comment. There was some discussion regarding the funding for the library. Um, as I led off when we were talking about the budget that you know this was an extremely difficult year for us and while nobody wants to see any services cut at all, um, every department received some sort of cut. And like I said, some of them received negative funding also in the process. And then finally, this Saturday at 10 a.m., the murals at the abandoned gas station will be unveiled. Weather dependent, it may get pushed back to later in the day, so something will be posted. But that's exciting and uh, thanks to Sam Tripsis and the Environmental Committee for getting this organized. As always, appreciate um, all the people that come to our meetings and hope that uh, you find this informative and we'll see you next month. Until then, thank you.